In this video, I'm going to show you how to take handheld footage, track that inside of Adobe After Effects, and then add anything into that footage. That could be text, that could be a shape layer, that could be an image, a video, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna show you how to track your footage in 3D space and then add an object into the footage. So let's get into it. So to start this off, we just need to track the footage before we can add anything in. And to do that, we're gonna to go to the 3D camera tracker. So we're gonna go into effects and presets and search for 3D camera tracker, drop that onto the footage. And Adobe After Effects is just going to take a minute to analyze your footage and then put loads of different tracking points on the footage. And there we go. You can see Adobe After Effects has finished the analysis. It is saying solving camera. And this means any moment now we'll get our tracking points appear on screen. So you can see these are all the different tracking points. And if we scrub through the video, you'll find there are many different tracking points throughout the entire video. So first of all, you want to figure out where you want to place this object. So do you want to place it on the fence here? Do you want to place it on the wall? Do you want it floating? in space on the ground, you want to pick a tracking point roughly in the same place where you want to place this. So in this example, I'm going to place it on the fence. So we'll pick one of these. You can see if you flick between these points, it will pick three different tracking markers and then add this target. So click that, right click, and we'll go create null and camera. And as you can see, we have created a new track null one and a 3D camera down here. So now we can go ahead and add anything into the shot. We just have to make sure we convert it from a 2D layer into a 3D layer in order for the track null one and the 3D tracker camera to figure out what this is and where it should be going. So let's just go ahead and create a new solid to begin with. So we'll go layer, new solid. We'll make this blue. Doesn't have to be blue. It can be anything you fancy. Then we'll just pull the scale of this down. And then you want to go down to toggle switches slash modes at the bottom and make sure you can see this selection of windows here. So you can see this right one here. The one that looks like a cube is your 3D layer option. So go to that royal blue solid that you just created and select 3D. And if we play this back, you'll notice it is now in 3D space and is tracked with the movement of the camera. But the problem is it's not parented to the wall yet. It's not glued onto the wall. This is where we can go into the drop down arrow in that solid layer. We're going to transform. And you can see we've got position, scale, orientation, and rotation, different dimensions. First of all, we want to just move the position over to the left. Then we'll rotate the X axis. You can see that's not what we want. So let's go down to Y. And that's what we want. We want to rotate it around so it's flat with the fence. Let's play that back. Now you can see that's moving faster than the fence. And the reason why that is, is because it's closer to the camera than the fence is. So if this was in 3D space, if the fence was here, this blue solid is here. So as the camera moves through, that blue solid is going to reach the camera first. So we need to push it back in space. And that would be in position, not scale. People would think you have to pull the scale down, but in reality, all you're gonna do is shrink it. You're not changing the position in 3D space. Position, the first option goes left and right. The second option goes up and down. And then this third option goes forwards or back. So I'm gonna send this back into the space. So let's go with 2000 to begin with. We'll just move the position across. We'll increase the scale. And let's see, has that stuck? Almost, but it's still a little bit ahead of where we need this to be. So let's push that back even further. Let's go 5,000. You can see that's doing a better job of sticking into the space. But again, it's traveling a bit too much for our liking. And there you go, you can see around 8,500. That is roughly placed in the right position. I pulled it over the fence, I pulled it off the fence just a little bit, just so it's less obvious, but you can see that is now glued into the scene. So let's grab something else. Let's grab some text. So we'll go to the T icon at the top and we'll just type out some text. We'll place that roughly in the center. And then same thing again, we're going to convert this to a 3D shape. So we'll select the 3D button. And now when we play this back, you can see that is way too far in the foreground for our liking. So we'll go into the drop down arrow, go transform, go to position, go to the third option. And I believe it was 8,500 we settled on for the shape. So now that we've pushed it back in the space, it has effectively now shrunk. So we need to increase the size of this text. Then we'll just increase the line separation 
just so they're not overlapping. And now when we play this back, you can see that it's perfectly stuck within the scene. And that's it, it doesn't really matter what you add now. You can add some video clips, you can add some images. All you want to do is drag that into Adobe After Effects, drag it into the timeline, convert that into a 3D layer rather than a 2D layer, because if it's a 2D layer, the 3D camera tracker won't recognize that it is a shape in 3D space. And then from there, you just have to push that back into the scene so that it glues where you want it to glue, change the position, and you're good to go. So there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be producing videos and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.